LWO on WeatherNet. Uh, lift off conditions looking pretty good. ATS is ready for launch. Ignition. Lift off. Falcon 9 has cleared the tower. Ten, nine, eight. Side booster ignition. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Good morning. It's Thursday, October 1st, and you're looking at a live view of Falcon 9 as it awaits its 9.17 a.m. Eastern Time launch from Pad 39A at Kennedy Space Center in Florida. And hello from SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California. My name is Shiva Bharadvaj, and I'm a space operations engineer here at SpaceX. Now today, you're watching a live webcast for our 13th Starlink mission and our 17th mission for this year. Now, if you're keeping track, we did have to stand down from our launch attempt uh, for this mission on Monday due to some unfavorable weather. But weather is looking better this morning, and so we're optimistic for the attempt today. It's also worth mentioning that today we currently have two rockets vertical on our neighboring launch pads, one here at Pad 39A for the Starlink mission, and then another on Pad 40 for an upcoming Space Force mission that's set to lift off on Friday evening. Now, it's not something you get to see every day, and really excited to see two of our boosters ready and raring to go for their respective missions. Now, to date, we have launched more than 700 Starlink satellites to orbit. Starlink, if you're not familiar, is a constellation of satellites that can provide high-speed, low-latency internet all over the globe, particularly in remote and rural areas where connectivity is limited and sometimes completely unavailable. Now, today's mission will be a little bit longer than our recent Starlink missions. We will be igniting our second stage's engine twice and deploying the stack of 60 Starlink satellites about an hour into the mission. By deploying our satellites after two burns instead of one, it allows us to get into a circular orbit, and that helps the Starlink satellites get to their final intended orbit about 550 kilometers above the Earth's surface a little bit faster. Now, at this point, T minus nine minutes and 30 seconds-ish, uh, we have all systems go for an on-time liftoff this morning. Now on your screen is a live view of Falcon 9. That's our two-stage launch vehicle. It stands about 70 meters tall. That's greater than the wingspan of a 747 aircraft. And today's mission will actually mark the third flight for this particular booster. It previously flew on our Demo 2 mission at the end of May, which sent NASA astronauts Bob and Doug safely on their journey to the International Space Station. We recovered it and then flew it again in July for the ANASIS-2 mission, and today it'll be flying its third mission. The bottom two-thirds of the vehicle that's uh, covered in soot is what we refer to as the first stage, and its job is to accelerate the launch vehicle through the Earth's atmosphere into space with the help of nine Merlin 1D engines that it has at the base of the rocket. Now, today we are attempting to recover this first stage on our drone ship named Of Course I Still Love You, that drone ship stationed off the east coast of Florida in the Atlantic Ocean. And the first stage is designed to be reflown 10 or more times with minimal refurbishment between flights. So we'll be excited to get that first stage back, hopefully later on in today's mission. Atop the first stage, we have the black carbon fiber inner stage. Uh, and then on top of that is actually the Falcon 9 second stage. It has a single Merlin vacuum engine that's actually hidden from view in that inner stage that I mentioned previously. And the first and second stages, after they ignite, that Merlin vacuum engine will ignite and separate, uh, excuse me, it will ignite and carry the Starlink sack of satellites into circular orbit, expecting that to happen about two and a half minutes into flight. Falcon 9 has been loading propellants since about T minus 35 minutes. Now, as a reminder, we use rocket grade kerosene or rocket propellant one, RP1 is our fuel. And we also use super chill liquid oxygen or LOX as our oxidizer to power Falcon 9. Currently, RP1 and LOX are both nearly fully loaded on both the first and second stages. And uh, liquid oxygen will continue to be topped up until the final minutes of the countdown. 
At the very top of the rocket, you have this large nose cone structure. That's what we refer to as our satellite fairing. And inside that is the stack of 60 Starlink satellites, safely enclosed. The fairing protects the satellites from aerothermal heating, aerodynamic loads, and contamination during the ascent portion of the mission. And once we reach the vacuum of space, we actually don't need those fairing halves. Uh, and so we'll jettison them back to planet Earth as the second stage continues on its journey to orbit. Now, one of the fairing halves today is brand new, but the other provided uh, or supported two previous Starlink missions, one in May of 2019 and another in March of this year. And we will be attempting to recover both the fairing halves today using our recovery ships Mistry and Mischief. About two minutes before the fairing halves are expected to land, the recovery team will conduct a go-no-go -no -go poll for the catch. And if the weather cooperates, weather is an important factor, and hopefully we'll see those two uh, fairing halves recovered. But uh, weather, really important for the sea states of the recovery boats, as well as how the fairings return to Earth on parachutes. And so we'll be keeping a close eye on that. Speaking of the weather, weather for the launch is currently uh, go. We have a 70% chance of go with uh, the possibility of a thick cloud layer rule being the only thing that might stop us. So far, haven't heard anything on the nets. So the vehicle, satellites, weather and range, all looking good for an on-time liftoff just under five and a half minutes from now. Now, as mentioned on our last Starlink webcast, the first phase of testing with our private beta program is well underway. In fact, earlier on this week, we uh, heard from emergency responders in Washington state, and they shared their experience using Starlink in the wake of the wildfires that had devastated areas of the state back in August, first responders have been using Starlink for their purposes and also to help bring the residents of Malden internet service Thanks, while Brian they rebuild their community. Retract. Now, Richard Hall, the head of Washington State's Military Department IT division, was quoted saying he's never set up any tactical satellite equipment that has been so quick to set up and anywhere near as reliable. Malden is located about 35 miles south of Spokane, Washington, and it falls within the northern latitudes of the planet, an area that our satellites currently service. Now, the way that emergency responders deployed Starlink is the way, and in fact, representative of how Starlink works best in remote and rural areas where internet connectivity is limited or unavailable. Our Starlink network is still in its early stages, but as the network grows, the coverage will also continue to grow. And we're continuing to target a public beta opportunity before the end of the year. So we'll share more information as we get closer to that. If you're interested in the updates when that com time comes, head on over to starlink.com and sign up for updates. So about uh, just under four minutes to go until liftoff. Falcon 9 moving into the final stages of countdown. At this point, the first and second stages are nearly fully loaded with RP-1 fuel and liquid oxygen as our oxidizer. The uh, super chill liquid oxygen is actually what's creating those uh, white clouds that you're seeing on the second stage there. That's from the liquid oxygen. We have a little bit of venting happening there. So as we continue to top up those tanks and uh, when that comes into contact with the moist, warmer ambient air of Florida, it causes water vapor to condense and actually literally form clouds. So coming up here, we expect to have prop loading complete T minus three minutes on the first stage, second stage shortly after at T minus two minutes. Once we get uh, to T minus 60 seconds, Falcon 9 will transition into startup. That's where the rocket's autonomous internal flight computers will take over the launch countdown all the way through the rest of the mission. And then shortly after that, at about T minus 45 seconds, the launch director will give a go, no go poll for launch. Excuse me, his go for launch. So far, Starlink payload continuing to look healthy. Falcon 9 team is not tracking any issues. Weather also continuing to look good, and the range is green for launch. Uh. 
Just passed through T minus two minutes. Stage two, locks load complete. There's call out for locks load complete, so we're finished loading propellants onto the launch vehicle, first and second stages. We'll expect to see some venting from the transporter erector, that truss structure next to the rocket. Uh, that is just to clear out the lines, so any liquid oxygen in those lines uh, being vented out, and then again forming clouds with the moist Florida atmosphere. And then coming up in about 20 seconds, expect to see Falcon 9 go into startup. We'll listen for the launch director's go. And again, this is pad 39A, so that black structure next to it uh, not too long ago had astronauts in it. No, no people on the pad, of course, today. LDs go for launch. So with that, all systems go for launch. Launch team is go for launch. Why don't we listen in to terminal count for Falcon 9 liftoff. T minus 30 seconds. So it looks like we had the clock stop at uh, T minus 18 seconds. We're going to check in with the launch team, see what we can learn from this. Uh, again, during this portion of the mission, Falcon 9 is fully autonomous and it's monitoring the health of a number of its systems. So uh, this could be completely normal. But we're going to check in with the teams. And that this is LD on countdown. We've had an uh, abort to a out of family ground sensor reading. just heard over the nets that we aborted on an out-of-family ground sensor reading. So a number of ground sensors uh, in the pad area that we use to monitor our ground systems, make sure everything is healthy before launch. I'm going to continue to listen to the nets, see if we can learn any more about today's war.
Now, as you just heard on the countdown nets, or if you're just joining us, we actually had an abort on uh, on the pad associated with an out of family ground sensor reading. Prior to that, the countdown was proceeding nominally. Now, keep in mind, the, the purpose of countdown is to help us catch potential issues prior to flight. There's a thousand ways that a launch can go wrong and only one way it can go right. And given that we're overly cautious on the ground, and if the team or the vehicle sees anything that looks slightly off, we'll stop the countdown. Now, overall, the vehicle does appear to be in good health, but that will end our launch attempt for today. Our next launch opportunity is still pending, but we hope you'll join us again for the next attempt. Please keep an eye out on our social media accounts for more information on that. Until then, thank you for joining us today, and we hope to see you next time.